Hello, and welcome to another episode of Motors for the Masses. And in this episode, we have a look at a liquid-cooled 125 with some stylish flair. So let's roll the intro and get cracking. Crack! <laughs> And before we start, I want to apologise if there's a slight echo in here, but outside is just too windy and too sporadic in its rain environmentally. Right. Well, you've seen all the reviews on the Zontis T310. Well, Zontis are at it again, this time with a 125. So let me introduce to you, with a cinematic arrangement, the Zontis ZT125U. I want to start today with the looks of this bike. Now, this screams Kiwi RKF or KTM Duke, especially in that orange. And that is a good thing because both those bikes are absolutely stunning. And this just looks immense. Its presence is fantastic. I love that front end. We're going to talk more about that in a little while. But overall, it's just... Oh, I, I can't describe how fantastic it looks in words. It's just... Mmm! Just marvel in all its marvellousness. If you look closely, you'll see a lot of influence in the 310 series. I mean, look at that beautifully crafted alloy swing arm and those fantastic footrests. Really nice pieces of equipment, along with all those body lines, mirrors, and switch gears. Not to mention the diamond cut wheels, keyless start, electronic seat release, and electronic fuel cap. The Zontis ZT uses a water-cooled four-stroke single-cylinder 125 engine with 14 and a half brake horsepower and nine and a half pounds foot of torque. Uses a Bosch EFI system and a six-speed gearbox. That means it'll get you to about 70, 75 miles an hour. Zontis states an MPG figure of 157. We think that's bollocks. Maybe 120 at the outside, but even that, 120 is still very good. Brakes are Bosch ABS, using a 300 millimeter front disc and a 230 millimeter rear disc. Upside down forks on the front and a monoshock on the rear. Rolling completely on 17 inch wheels, you've got CST rubber with a 110 on the front and a 130 on the rear. Under this nicely sculptured electronic fuel cap lies a 12 and a half litre tank, giving a very clear view of this dash here, which could well look like it came off the Zontus Phantom 250. Well, there's a reason for that, because it did. Doesn't matter, because it still works absolutely fine. And it looks lovely, very clear, very simple, no messing around, it does the job it's supposed to do. Now, I do want to mention this. Now these proximity keys really are proximity keys because 
If this is not anywhere near the bike, as in on it, it won't work. So here, it's fine. If I put it down here, which is one meter away, it will not unlock. Now that's fantastic. I do like that. So I'm just going to bring it slightly closer. We're now half a meter away. Now it works. So basically, within half a meter, as in anywhere in this circle of the actual bike, it will then unlock. Other than that, it won't work. I like that. Now again, there's a lot of style features I really like on this bike. Really well put together, really nicely sculptured. Even this stand, very reminiscent of the 310, and it looks fantastic. Doesn't look weak and flimsy, it looks nice. And that feeling also extends to things like this. Now, I really do like these little fins on here. Very nicely done. And all these little design quirks and features. Really nicely done. Very beautiful. Very nice. All the wires in here are all nicely wrapped up. You've got heat wrap around some of them as well. So anything that goes near the radiator is heat wrapped. And it's just neat and tidy. Very well built. Very well built. Really am impressed, to be honest. I mean, bearing in mind Zontis of old um, were okay, but they weren't amazing. The 310 turned a corner. This is just phenomenal. For a 125 bike, at this price point, and we'll talk more about that at the end, is brilliant. Really am impressed. Lots of little features. The rubbers they use, very nicely done. The design around all here. And the same thing goes for these switch gears. Again, very reminiscent of the 310, and I just love the way they are put together. They're all good quality, nice, good switches, lovely design, nice and clunky as they should be. Everything has a purposeful shunt. Um, and it just looks really nice. You know, I can't sort of praise it enough, really. Um, they are backlit, and when I start the bike, you'll see that they're backlit. Uh, red, again, like the Zontis 310. You've got your kill switch here. You've got your lights on and off. But again, being Euro 4, or sorry, Euro 5, Euro 5, yes, Euro 5, um, the lights are on all the time. Um, you've got your lock here, your seat release, your fuel cap, your start button. Kill switch is also your off switch. Indicators on this side, horn, lights, and hazard flashes, and a pass on there as well. Um, it also has an eco and sport mode. Pretty pointless on a 125, I think, because sport mode is pretty much all you're ever going to need. Eco, sport, that will stay in sport forever, I should think. I don't know anybody who's going to buy this bike and put it in eco mode. Maybe, but I very much doubt it. Um, other than that, it's all very clear. You've got a mode button on here, which changes from trip to odometer. Uh, your fuel indicator, rev counter along the top, and a big, nice digital speedo in the middle. And a gear indicator. Under the seat, you can't really put anything in here other than a, maybe a small toolkit, but then that lifts out like so, very simple. And under here is the battery, a nice big chunky 10 amp hour battery. Certainly gonna do everything it needs to do on this bike. Now, I think they've learned from the 310, the old 310 had um, a lithium battery and the size was only really big enough for a, a, a four amp hour or a, a, like a four BS um, gel battery, which is probably what you find on a 50. Um, so uh, they've really learned from that and they've really upped the capacity of the battery. Looks nice and neat under there again, as you can see, look at that look, all these machined parts, very neat. All these braided and wrapped hoses, very nice. Really am impressed with the quality in there. Again, nice, good, Switches and uh, connectors in there, nothing looks dodgy, nothing looks cheap. Really good. I like how the seat goes as well. You just push that in there, put that back on there, and that slots in like so. All right, that bit's a bit fiddly. Oh, there you go, in there, in there, and down. There, done, nice. The exhaust tailpipe is very nice and stainless steel. But this box is huge. It goes all the way under here, all the way back there and there. 
It is that big. It is the box. It is mammoth, but nicely hidden. And as I say, stainless steel, which gives a nice sort of induction roar, and you'll hear that very shortly. The bike also has a slipper clutch, so smooth gear change is also expected. Now, I understand that these um, mud guards and mud guard single sided brackets are a bit marmite. Some people like them, some people don't. I personally don't mind them. This is quite large, but it does serve a purpose. It stops crap flipping up on the bottom of the bike and up your back. Um, perhaps a tail tidy option in here with a number plate, but then loads of bikes have that. And this seems to be the way everything is going now. I don't mind it. I prefer the single side. This is a lovely sturdy bracket. Again, um, plastic covered, but aluminium underneath, or poss possibly stainless steel. Maybe, maybe, or just steel. It's sturdy anyway. It certainly isn't going to come off. Um, it does its job. It works. It looks okay. Again, it is nicely done with this um, nice embossed Zontis badge in there. It's certainly not cheap. And you can still see this side all open. Very nice. I do like that. Um, with a number plate on here, you wouldn't really have too much of an issue. But you've got your number plate down here, and then your L plate might be quite low for those that have L plates. But not really much you can do about that, unfortunately. Um, again, if you had a number plate up here, then your L plate would be down here anyway. So swings and roundabouts. But you know, let us know in the comment section below what you feel about these style of brackets. Do you like them? Do you hate them? Do you don't mind them? Do you feel that you're okay with it? You'll put up with it because it serves a purpose and stops crap flicking up all over the place. Now under here you've got this little flap and inside here, if I can get it open uh, with my fingernails, oh, I'm going to pull my nails off in a very manly kind of way. There we go. Our bolts. Now, I think that is for a tail tidy, and I'm yet to discover if that's definitely the case. Um, I think it holds the bracket on on the inside, but I wonder if a tail tidy would fit on there. Um, I don't know. I need to find that out, and I shall put that in a little subtext here. The bike measures up at two meters long, 845 millimeters wide and 1.1 meters tall, all pretty much standard. It's got a 790 millimeter seat height and it weighs in wet at 150 kilos. That's a little bit heavier than a lot of 125s, which is around 130, 135 kilos, but it's really sturdy, it's really well built, and you've got enough power to propel that extra 15 kilos. Now, with a mean front end that looks like it belongs on the set of Star Wars, you do get LED front lights, like so. You've got those lights, you've got your main lights, and when I start the bike... A nice main beam. Oh, I like that. Wow, that really projects very far. Flash, flash, flash. Now, I did actually Google for about an hour because I looked at that and thought, that looks like some kind of drone, identical to some kind of drone or droid that um, is off Star Wars. And for the life of me, I couldn't find the one that I was on about. If you can enlighten me, please let me know. It's a tall, thin droid that holds a gun, might be a bounty hunter, and has this kind of weird face. And I'm sure it's got two aerials off its head. Might be one of those, was it one of those rolly things that, oh, I can't remember. But I'm sure you know what I mean. It looks immense. Look at that. Oh, that's brilliant. I love that. You get a nice, neat LED light at the back there, and your indicators are down here. And if you look very carefully inside this front fairing, I'm going to zoom you in, there is a USB port. There. Right, OK, I'm just going to switch to the boom mic so you can hear how it sounds and the induction roar from this exhaust. And then I'll switch the lights off in here so you can see just how well those LEDs project.
Okay, so um, it didn't work too well, did it? Because obviously when I turn the lights off, uh, the camera compensates for the lack of light. Damn you, Canon 80D and all your technology. Um, so what I'll do tonight, I shall uh, put this outside, turn all the lights off outside, and then fire this up, and you can see just how well it projects in the dark, in the real world. Normal lights, main beam. Oh. But for now, let's get this out on the road and see how it performs. And we're back. Right, I'll get my gear off and we'll have a chat. Right, thoughts on the ZT125U. Well, it's extremely comfortable. This seat is very forgiving, very jellyfied. Um, although you are very close to the tank, it feels like a street bike because you're quite close to the tank. You're not sitting back with arm's length. You're, you're quite close. Um, for me, that's not a problem at all, um, but it's definitely that style, very similar to the Keyway RKF um, in that respect. That's about the only similarity there is uh, because it rides very nicely. These tyres, um, even though they're not particularly curved, this really pushes into a corner very quickly and you get round leaning over quite far without any dramas whatsoever. Bearing in mind this is a new bike on new tyres, I didn't have any confidence issues going around corners at all. It did feel very planted nicely. I'm uh, very pleased with that. Um, the dash, very easy to read, very there in your face. You can't miss it. Even with the sun on it, no dramas. Um, it doesn't uh, disturb the viewing pleasure, shall we say. You can see everything. Um, Switch gears, very nice indeed, um, very positive, very easy to use, uh, there's no slipping or anything like that, you're not um, having to turn the indicator off three or four times, it's very easy. Um, one downside, again with a lot of bikes, and I said the same about the Zontis T310, which this is derived from, these stalks are not long enough, you need another inch and a half, two inches on the stalk because I'm seeing half an arm and I'm having to do that again to look what's behind me. I've never understood that, it's very frustrating. Um, 
there's no need for it. All you need is an extra little bit on the arms and that solves that problem. Other than that, it pulls very nicely, it's very smooth. That gear change is very positive. The slipper clutch does a great job because it does change gear very nicely, very smoothly, very much into the gear without any worries about slipping or missing gears at all. Very pleased with that. You get a nice sort of throaty roar from that exhaust. Um, it does sound pretty nice. Um, I'm using the word nice a lot and I apologise for that. Um, I'll try and think of alternatives, shall I? Um, I also like, uh, well, everything really. I, uh, I, I don't feel uncomfortable and I don't feel as though um, it's not for me. Even though this is not my style of bike and I love the way it looks, but sitting very close to the tank is not usually something I like doing. I don't sit really far back, but I, I'm usually a, a middle seater, if you know what I mean. But it just feels very comfortable and it sort of puts you in a sporty mode, like you want to sling it into corners. It does feel very sporty and in that respect it does it really, really well. Um, the brakes, brilliant. ABS certainly feels like there's ABS because the brakes pull up fantastically. And again, bearing in mind I can't brake too hard because this is a new bike on new brakes. Um, other than that, I don't have anything else to say about it. Um, everything feels very accessible. Everything feels uh, easy to use. And the bike is pleasurable to ride, I think is the best way to describe it. It's pleasurable. There you go. Better than nice, isn't it? Um, so there you go. If I was to mention one other thing, it would be the suspension. Now, it does feel a little bit firm, but again, I think that adds to the sportiness. It's not wallowy by any means whatsoever. Um, it is, and but it's not knobbly. It's not like, ow, that hurts, ow, that hurts. It just feels a firm suspension, and I think that just adds to the sportiness of the bike. These crash bar bits, however nice and neat and solid they are. They've got two holes drilled in there like another piece of plastic should go on. But there isn't one. And there isn't any prepped for this bike. These have been built so they can go on different bikes and the holes are there, so deal with it kind of thing. Maybe a couple of um, flat-headed screws can go in there or something? Or... Uh, a couple of Allen key headed bolts just to block them off maybe. But other than that, I can't find anything else wrong. There's nothing else I don't like about this bike. So what about the price? Well, it's £2,899 on the road with a two year parts and labour warranty. But how does that compare to its competitors? Well, something like the Keyway RKF is £2,400. But it does have two and a half horsepower less and it doesn't look as bonkers and as very well built as this. However very well built it is, it's just not quite to this quality. However, its main competitor, the KTM Duke, is £4,300, although at the moment it is £3,800, but that's still 900 quid more than one of these. And I don't know if that's £900 more of a bike. £900 can get you a lot these days. It can pay for your insurance. So you can get this and the insurance for the price of a KTM. And that, I think, is a bargain. Now, just before we finish this video, there's something else I want to show you. Now, it might be a little thing, but I'm really impressed with the book that comes with this as well. Now, this is the manual, but it is bike-specific. As in, all the pictures... And all the details refer to this particular bike, not a group of bikes that use this engine and possibly this frame. No, it's very bike specific. Now, this obviously is not a generic frame, it's not a generic bike, but everything in it is in the manual in English. And I'm really impressed with how it's laid out. Everything. Really, really nice. Even wiring diagrams at the back there all the specifications uh, for this and the 155 version, which of course the UK doesn't get, but that's a different story. But I just want to say, well done Zontis really, because that is a nice step forward. A lot of these bikes that are coming through, they're getting a lot better, but traditionally you get some generic leaflet with a few details on that 
maybe has some relevance to the bike that you have. But this, very good touch. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Votes for the Masses. Thank you very much for joining us. We are going to be back next time with another one of these Zontis, but a very, very different looking bike. Uh, you may see me in the same clothes because I may be filming it on the same day. Yeah, it's very busy at the moment, what can I say? Uh, unfortunately, I've even had to film this over three days. I'm filming this today on the inside, then tomorrow I'm out with the GoPro and the 360 camera. I just didn't know I had a 360 camera. You may have noticed from the filming earlier. Um, so I shall be doing that, and then on another day, I'll be out with Jamie in the truck and doing all the ride past shots. So yes, it's very busy at the moment, and with the lockdown looming, we've got to be very careful how we do things, because we are adhering to lockdown rules, even though we are staying open as an essential shop for repairs and sales for essential workers and all that stuff. So, yeah, um, if you do want to uh, learn more about this bike, or if you are interested in this bike, perhaps you have one already, perhaps you have one on order, let us know in the comments section below. And if you want to reserve one or buy one, you can buy it from my shop, Lightning Storm Motorcycles. The link is in the description below as well, along with the links to our Patreon and our Facebook shop, if you want to buy hoodies and clothing and watches and stuff like that, or if you just want to support this channel through Patreon. Everything is unbelievably, graciously accepted. And thank you for your support by liking, subscribing, and sharing this video as well. And don't forget to click that bell for future videos. And that's all I have to say. If you have anything else to say, please leave it in the comment section below. But until next time, please ride and drive carefully, but have fun. Bye-bye.